Good morning, Hope Community Church. <laughs> um, today we are in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Chapter 3. And wow, if, you, if, if you've already read the chapter, you know what you should have. But if you haven't, we're going to read it together. If you haven't read it, um, chapter 3... I believe the Holy Spirit is going to slap us around a bit today. I said, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to slap us around a little bit today, which is great. I, church, we, <laughs> we, we need some anointed Holy Spirit correction. I was going to say slaps, but correction sounds less violent. <laughs> church, we need some Holy Spirit correction in our life. We really do. We really do. In, in, in when as we live in a society that is so materialistic, so ungodly, so worldly, so fleshly, so so self-centered, which Timothy will talk or Paul will talk about to Timothy in today's chapter, it's really easy for us to not stay on that straight and narrow. It's really easy for us to not stay you know, be the disciplined ones, disciples that we're called to be. It's a lot harder to, to walk word, like Peter says, walk worthy of our calling. For our calling is holy. We're called to holiness. So in this world that we live in, you know, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. It's easy for us to sometimes be, be how do I say it? Jesus said it this way. You cannot be a friend of God and a friend of the world. In fact, if you are a friend of the world, you are you make yourself you make yourself an enemy of God. You can't play both sides, church. You can't be on both sides. You're either with the Lord or you're a friend of the world. And I choose to be a friend of God. Amen. Just like Abraham. Abraham was called a friend of God. So today's chapter, we're gonna need to pray for sure. Father, in the name of Jesus, give us ears to hear and hearts to understand what you have for us this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, 2 Timothy chapter 3 starts with this, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Now, here's an interesting point to make. As we read this list, it might become it will become very evident that, man, it sounds like we're living in the last times or the last days. In the last days, perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves. Ooh, do we live in a day where men are lovers of themselves? Yes. Lovers of money. Ooh, do we live in a world where people are lovers of money? Yep. Boasters. Yep. Proud. Yep. Blasphemers. Yep. Disobedient to parents. Yep. Unthankful unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Wow, that is a strong one, despisers of good. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lover of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now, here here is an interesting point to make. Just just kind of like cuz you're like, "Well, I'm not a lover of pre- pleasure. I'm a lover of God." Well, we're going to sit here for a for a few moments, okay? Because we can read something and we can automatically think that it doesn't apply to us. Like, "Oh, I'm not a traitor. I'm not headstrong. I'm not haughty. I'm not a love, lover of pleasure rather than lovers of God." Let me just give you a few examples, okay? You're not in trouble. Let me just give you a few examples. And you might fall in this category, you might not fall in this category. But if you but if and I'm not and listen, I'm not saying that this is who you are, okay? I'm not saying that you are a lover of pleasure rather than a lover of God. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that there might be times or moments, not often, not often, we believe the best in people, not often, that you've might have chosen pleasure over God. What do you mean by that? If you've ever slept in and you chose to sleep, you woke up, 
you know, during the winter you woke up and it was cold and you were snuggled in your blankets. You're like, oh man, I, I know I should go to church, but, but I'm going to just stay in bed and I'm going to just watch church online instead of going. Or, oh, the, the, the baseball games today or the football game today is today or, or, oh, the, there's a concert tonight and I'm going to, I'm going to choose to go be entertained rather than go hear a word of God that I desperately need in my life. We talked about entertainment yesterday. Those are just a couple of examples. Uh, in, in, instead of being nice to this person, I'm going to, I'm going to be rude and mean to them and I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to be maybe a little bit um, spiteful, reven uh, vengeful towards them because I'm angry at them or they didn't get my order right or they spoke to me wrong. So I'm not going to love God and love people. I'm going to take pleasure in being angry. Just a couple of examples. I, I, I know my family is going through this situation and but but you know what and, and instead of and instead of spending some time in prayer and fasting and worshiping and 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 contending for my family uh, there's a new show on Netflix I'm going to watch that instead all I'm saying church is that it's easy for us to read scriptures and automatically think oh that's not me oh that's not me when in reality it is you it could be you. What was our prayer a few moments ago? Lord, give us ears to hear and hearts to understand. Here it is. Wow. So traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. So in the end times, people will have a form of godliness, but deny its power. And from such people turn away having a form of godliness but denying its power what is the form of godliness but denying its power this is um if any if anyone knew forms of godliness but denying its power if anyone knew that if anyone was familiar with that it was paul cuz he grew up a pharisee of pharisees which were all about having a form of godliness. But their, Jesus said, their traditions make the word of God of no effect. The traditions of the Pharisees, they, they, they chose to enforce traditions more than they chose to enforce holiness. They, they, they chose to enforce the appearance of godliness rather than the, the, the character and, and walking in godliness. So you might be real, oh, that's not me, you know. I have form of godliness. I don't even know what that means. It means that having a form of godliness but denying its power is you coming to church you come into church every single week, even twice a week, and nothing changes in your life. Having a form of godliness is you come to church, you pray before you eat. But yet, like Pastor Drew was talking about on Sunday. You're not the moon. You're not like the moon. You're not reflecting the Son, Jesus Christ. We're called to reflect Him. See, following Jesus looks like something. When you follow Jesus, when you fall in love with Jesus, when you have fellowship with Him, it's not an outward appearance. It's an inward relationship. It's, it, it's this inward intimacy that you have with Him that creates that reflection where people can see you and say, wow, that person loves Jesus. Look at, look, when people see you, they say, when people see you, I want people, sorry, I'll, I'll use me an example. When, when people see me, I want people to see that I love Jesus. Not that I do all the right things. When my family sees me, I don't want them to see, I want them to see, wow, this person really believes in God and really follows God. Not, wow, this person just joined a cult and he just wants to be in church all day. There's a difference, church. I want people to see that God is real in my life. Not that I check off all the religious boxes. I don't want to have an outward appearance of godliness. 
I don't want to deny his power. It needs to be the opposite. I want to live in his power. What do you mean live in his power? Listen, Jesus doesn't give power. Jesus is power. Jesus doesn't, you know, give healing. He is healing. Everything you need, everything you need is in Jesus. No matter what, no matter what your circumstances, no matter what your ailment is, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're lacking, whatever it is you need. Stop focusing on Jesus, give this to me, give this to me, give this to me. No, no, no. Jesus, can you be this for me? Can I just spend time with your presence and, and, and you fill the all in all? Jesus, I just want to spend time with your presence and I know that just being with you will heal me. Just being with you, circumstances will get better. Just being with you, Lord, you will give me the wisdom and the understanding of, on, on how to navigate God. That's what we need, church. People who love Jesus and reflect him. Not people who just do all the right things. From such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into household and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to, oof, always learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I'm trying to think. There's people who get so caught up with how deep they can get in the Bible. They're so caught up with how deep they can get with angels and, 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 and demons and the Nephilim and creation and the end time scriptures that they lose Jesus in it. You're like, wait, well, what's wrong with studying? The point of studying the Word of God and learning more about the Word of God and growing deeper in the Word of God is to know Him more, is to experience Him more, is to grow in relationship with Jesus, not grow in knowledge, not grow in intellect. And this is a... This is a deception that... I, man, we're going to park here. We're probably going to end here, actually. This is a deception that Satan uses of people who come into the family of God. They fall in love with Jesus. And... Oop, there goes the computer. Give me one second, guys. But this is a deception that Satan uses where he he wants to where he can't necessarily get you out of church. He can't necessarily get you maybe even out of ministry. He can't get you out of um, like serving and... Let's see, where were we? Aha. There you go. All right. Ooh. I'm still here, guys. Just one button. Okay. So, this is something that Satan tries to do with us. And it's, and, and, and right now, as we're talking about it, it's something that, um, that I believe he did with Adam and Eve. How did, how, how did, um, how did Satan deceive Adam and Eve? He convinced them that doing the wrong thing was right. He convinced them that doing the wrong thing would be beneficial to them. If you eat of this fruit, you will become like God, knowing good and evil. You will become like God, knowing good and evil. So there was, a, there, there was, there was something there to obtain without, without obeying God. In the same way, we can get so caught up with, you know, geez, there's even like new age theology coming into the church. 
which if you guys have been reading um, the, the, the chapters in Timothy, Paul references doctrine, right? Making sure that good doctrine is being preached. Why? Because doctrine is <laughs> like very important to Paul and to all of us. But what happens in the scripture where, it's, where it says people are looking for knowledge, that they're looking for knowledge, but they never come to the truth because they care more about knowing knowledge. They're, they care about m- more about gaining knowledge more than knowing God. And that's what happened with Adam and Eve. They cared more about knowing good and evil rather than knowing God. And the deception was, I'm going to be like God by knowing more. I'm going to be like God by knowing more. In the case of Adam and Eve, it was, I'm going to be like God by knowing good and evil. And in the case of Paul, he's saying people, they, 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 they want to be, they think knowledge makes them more spiritual. No, authentic relationship with Jesus makes you spiritual. And listen, and, and I'm sure I'm not, I'm not, and right now, I'm not talking to a whole lot of people. I'm talking to a very few specific people who really love the Bible, but do not get ensnared pursuing knowledge more than pursuing the one who is knowledge, the one who is wisdom. That's Jesus. Amen. And, 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 but even for all of us, we, we can do that where we, we know what the Bible says, but yet we're still on WebMD trying to figure out what our symptoms are. We, 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 we know what the Bible says, but we're still on YouTube looking for Christians that will agree with our sinful point of view. Listen, you can find Christians on YouTube who will agree with anything. Literally. Uh, the, 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 the other day I saw, I'm not going to say who it was or who it was from or who it was by or who it was for, it doesn't matter. But they were talking about, oh man, I don't even know if I should go there. They were talking about certain things that should be allowed in marriage. And I was like, ooh, I don't think that should be allowed in marriage because I don't see that in the Bible. But they, they were alluding that it's okay to do this in marriage because it's a good idea. It's a good idea, but it doesn't mean it's a God idea. So I, I really don't want to get into that, to be honest. <laughs> but does that make sense? In our pursuit of knowledge and knowing more about the Bible and, and, and studying more, we can, get, we can lose Jesus because we're trying to figure out the mysteries of the Bible. We're trying to figure out, you know, the creation or, or revelations. And, you know, and, you know in revelation, is, is this Russia? Is, is, is this Africa? You know, is, is this, you know, who's this? And we can get so caught up with it that we lose Jesus. Church, when you read the Bible, Jesus is the only one that you should be finding in it. Amen. In every single scripture, in every single chapter and verse and, and um, book and letter, look for Jesus. Amen. And I promise you, you will have all the knowledge and wisdom that you need. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to be people who pursue your presence, God, not pursue knowledge. Let us not be puffed up with knowledge, God, but let us be humbled in your presence, God, with a fervent desire for you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in to Daily Hope today. Tomorrow, um, we will continue uh, Timothy and... Will we continue, Timothy? I think we will. Yeah. Actually, I'm not sure. Tune in tomorrow uh, for Daily Hope. Before I let you go today, I want to remind you that people are our heart. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorite. And Jesus is our Lord. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.